Departing Welford National Park, I resupply in Windora before taking the Diamantina Development Road to bring me to Moravie Road, where I travel south through sand dune country to visit Old Batuta for the night. I then head west on the Birdsville Development Road before swinging north again to circumnavigate Lake Machati and bring me to Badauri. Making my way from Welford to uh, Windora uh, before heading off uh, to the sand dune country towards Birdsville. But the horizons out here are just incredible, they go on and on forever. Uh, the road's in really good condition. And, uh, I'll resupply you in Windora, contact the kids, and uh, look forward to the, uh, the next part of the day. I'm still on the uh, Moraberry Road heading towards uh, Old Batuta. I actually haven't seen another vehicle for the last four hours, not just on this road, but even on the Diamantina. But, uh, the country's changing. I've driven through Gibber Plains and now some of the sand dunes and jump ups are starting to occur. So the evening's wearing on. I'm keeping an eye on that, uh, that weather and uh, heading to my camp at Old Batuta. And I've just turned off the Diamond Centre Development Road and heading south on Moraberry Road to the ghost town of Old Batuta. Apparently the last resident who owned the pub moved out in 1996-98, something like that. The town's been empty ever since. Um, there's a racetrack there, and once a year they hold a, a, a race there. So the population moves, but for the rest of the year, there's no one. So I'm not too sure about this road. I only spotted it on a map. It says it's dry with a use only, four wheel drive only, but so far it's uh, in pretty good condition. But I suppose time will tell. It's about 100 kilometres into Matuta and that's where I'll spend the night before I make my way by our birds will to uh, Katamara Rossi that's the next camp. This is the Batuta Hotel it's uh, been deserted for something like 20 years now. The town's population is officially zero. And this is allegedly the camping area. And it doesn't impress me either. So I think I might move on and look for somewhere perhaps a little less depressing.
to the ruins of the Karkori homestead. It was built in uh, 1877 and eventually abandoned after they lost 4,000 head of cattle due to the conditions here. So uh, I think the roof was uh, commandeered by the government during World War II. They used the roofing iron. It's an unbelievably desolate area. Imagine living out here in 1877. They must have been hard people. We'll go through, have a bit of a look at the place. Rooms aren't uh, particularly large. And uh, I have my camera sitting here ready for the compulsory through the window photograph at Karkori Ruins. I'm at the Katabra Crossing on the Air Development Road just uh, south of the Dowry. Um, at the Billabong here, these species of birds is uh, just incredible. There's been wedge tail eagles, kestrels, Pelicans, spoonbills, there's ducks, there's war hens, it's uh, absolutely wonderful. And uh, tomorrow I'm heading off to drive around the southern shores of the lake and uh, hopefully see some more. A white headed heron and a data share a perch. Here we have a black kite. A handsome fellow. And an Australian data drying his wings. All of the birds seem quite content to perch quite close to each other and without any uh, aggravation between the species whatsoever. At some occasions there was three or four species all sitting on the same branch. Again, a magnificent black kite. They were wonderful to watch in the air. And here we have a dusky moorhen looking for treats. And it would hold the food or whatever it found in its foot before uh, eating it. Some black ducks. And a hard headed duck. black ducks and a majestic Australian pelican. Again sharing a branch, a data and a black kite. Here we have an egret. I'm sure this guy had a plane. He just sat there staring at the water for a couple of hours. This is a heron. He sat on the opposite bank, staring at the uh, other bird. The 
this is a royal spoonbill. He avoided spending time with the commoners and uh, kept to his own end of the pool. He swings his head backwards and forwards, searching the bottom for a tasty snack. Again, one of the numerous black kites. never seen so many different species sharing a body of water in complete contentment. This pied cormorant seems to like resting on one leg. He's a peaceful dove. The black kites were incredible to watch. The aerobatics as they soared and zoomed above the water was a pleasure to watch. I'm on the five and a half thousand square kilometre Clooney Station, just south of Lake Pachati. Out there behind me somewhere is the plant camp of the ill-fated Bert Wills expedition. It's where after they did their scientific uh, observations, they buried all of their equipment. And, uh, apparently looters have dug up the area searching for relics, which is a bit sad and I believe it's over the
I'm still on Clooney Station on top of one of the uh, sand dunes here. It's still relatively early in the morning and uh, it's just absolutely stunning. I haven't seen anyone for the last uh, 24 hours so uh, the feeling of remoteness is pretty good and that's what I'm out here for but the scenery is just unbelievable. It's just beautiful and uh, clear blue skies even the coitus illegitimus flies have uh, eased off a little bit today so uh, they're almost bearable so continuing on around the uh, eastern side of Lake Machati now and uh, making my way into Baduri